And the next game is projected to have quite a bit more offense. We got the Kansas City Chiefs at San Francisco 49ers, a repeat of Super Bowl number. Uh, it's one of them. But the Kansas City Chiefs won in that one. And funny enough, we got Garoppolo back. So it's Garoppolo versus Mahomes again. Patrick, I'll let you kick this one off. Two and a half point spread in favor of the road Chiefs. Obviously, lots of injuries to the 49ers. They fell to the Atlanta Falcons. Coming back home for this one, how do you see it playing out? Yeah, so two and a half gives you a little pause. I got it at three year order in the week. I, I actually do like San Francisco here. Um, I, I love Kyle Shanahan in these bounce back spots. And we might actually be getting Nick Bosa and Trent Williams back come game time. So there's kind of that macro level analysis. And then I also think there's the more matchup game script analysis where without Tyreek Hill offensively, this Kansas City team is very dependent on Travis Kelsey in the run game. And I just love the 49ers coverage linebackers. I think they have a great run-stopping defensive front. It kind of feels like Kansas City emptied the tank last week defensively. So I could see San Francisco's offense rolling a little bit in this one coming off a really poor performance against Atlanta where they really just struggled to finish off drive. So at the plus three, I just like like the home team here with San Francisco. Plus two and a half, I probably don't touch her. At least I, I take my unit share down a little bit, but I do like San Francisco here. Jacob? Yeah, um, I think the sports books are begging you to take the Chiefs with this minus two and a half line, and I'm going to oblige. Um, the biggest concern to me about the Niners, of which there were many last week, but their biggest issue is that they really couldn't run the ball. They averaged 3.1 yards per carry against Atlanta's defense, which ranks 24th in run defense EPA. And the Chiefs rank 13th in that metric. So if you're taking away the run game for, for San Francisco, which is a lot easier to do with the shape of their offensive line at the moment, um, with Trent Williams and Michael Lynch injured, and then the fact that they lost two starters in the offense, uh, interior offensive line heading into the season. If you're taking away their run game, you're forcing Jimmy G to throw. And his minus four and a half uh, completions over expectation is the fourth worst among qualified passers. And he really struggles under pressure. So I talked about the interior offensive line being not the same as last year. Chris Jones is going to rip through them, I think. Um, his 24 pressures are tied with Aaron Donald for the most among interior defensive linemen. So I think you're going to see the Chiefs play some cover two defense, limit those explosive plays, and just let Chris Jones tee off on the interior offensive line. And then on offense, I think the 49ers defense is so banged up. I mean, they were throwing out Sam Warmack and Diamador Lenoir at corner last week. Maybe they get a couple guys back, maybe not, but their injuries are just piling up to a breaking point. And I think the Chiefs are going to be able to throw the ball in this game. Um, I just think the Chiefs are the healthier team. They're going to be motivated to bounce back after that loss to Buffalo. And I like them to win this game. Jason? Yep, I'm in the same boat. Um, I think this is definitely that Jacob put there begging you to take the Chiefs. I mean, you sent me a Slack message Sunday night, like, why are the Chiefs minus three? I had the same question, just given all the injuries on the Niners' side. And... This is a game where there hasn't been many this year where you go, ah, oh, there's a clear quarterback advantage. And this is one where there's just a clear quarterback advantage. And that's something that I always usually love to bet on. Um, Atlanta forced the Niners to throw a ton and kind of look how that game actually went. Like Garoppolo made two mistakes, two crucial mistakes with the interceptions. Um, I don't really like, I mean, Matt, we, we talked about this. I don't love the fact that they just pulled Jeff Wilson after a fumble and we're like, yeah, you're not touching the ball. I mean, the offense just went to absolute shit after that happened. Um, it failed to turn into a, a, a scoring position where they probably would have capped it off. And I also don't know if they're going to try and get back to kind of utilizing Debo Samuel in the run game. Like they've really actually kind of avoided that the last few weeks. Um, I wonder if that's a trend that continues. And then, yeah, Jacob touched on just the healthier sides. I, I think overall, like they can kind of continue to, to batter the secondary that is injured. Patrick, you did bring up that Nick Bosa could be back and Trump Williams could be back as well. But like the secondary is still an absolute mess at this point. And it's kind of like how it was last year where they just had three or four crucial injuries. And I think Mahomes can definitely take advantage of that. We also still have to remember the Chiefs are bringing in, you know, two new players that, you know, Mahomes is c continuing to develop a, a chemistry with, with MBS and and uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and like it looks to be improving on a week-to-week -week basis like that was a good spot for obviously Smith-Schuster last week um, but I think it's another good spot for him as well so I don't think they'll be as reliant on Kelsey and it will f kind of focus on Mahomes throwing the ball outside of that because I do think Mahomes can get too locked in on him and then that may actually be beneficial for the Chiefs this week so 
I like them to go on the road and kind of pull this game off. I think the Niners are in a spot where I don't completely trust them. Um, 18th in, in offensive EPA per play this year. If you want to take out the week one rainstorm, they're still 14th. That's just kind of a middling offense in a league that's not really good offensively right now. So um, I like the Chiefs. I'm going to lean on that offense here in a spot where that's less than the field goal. You say that, Jason, but MVS, as someone who had to play him in Dynasty, had three targets, no receptions, had his one touchdown reception called back on a stupid holding call. Yeah, and I'm still upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patrick and I were kind of dumbfounded by that usage. So I'm going to go over my game picks and player props because they all follow a very specific um, vision for how this game is going to go. And for that reason, I'm placing half um, units on everything just because I don't want to get carried away. Again, don't want to repeat of what happened last week, as you guys will see in the report card. I like the Chiefs minus two and a half. I think the clear QB advantage is what's going to win this game for the Chiefs. I'm not confident in Nick Bosa playing just because he was limited all last week and he still didn't play and it's a growing injury. So until he gets a full practice in, I am not confident in him playing. If he does, it doesn't change too much for me, but it, it definitely lowers my confidence. Obviously, Nick Bosa is a playmaker. So... I'm with Jacob on this player prop of Mahomes. Over two and a half passing touchdowns at plus 155. I love that at plus money. I think Andy Reid often forgets what handing the ball off is, which is fine when you have Mahomes as your quarterback. And I do think that the Chiefs get to three or four touchdowns. Very, very likely those are passing touchdowns. So game plus 150 odds. I love that. I think Miko Hardman over 50 and a half longest reception. I really like what how they're using Miko Hardman. I've loved him even after the catch this year. He's been pretty shifty. He hasn't broken as many tackles. He's a small guy, but he, he is pretty shifty out there. 15 and a half is a really small number, in my opinion. That's one, you know, intermediate post route. And then Debo Samuel. I think that the 49ers will be trailing. The Chiefs will force them to pass the ball. Eventually, there'll be a time in this game that maybe kind of backdoor garbage time, cover time and I think Debo will get a little bit of a longer reception where he's able to break a couple tackles take one 30 40 yards he's hit this prop in more than half the games if you take out the tsunami game from week one which I think you can so I like it half unit on all those we'll kick it off back to you Patrick on those player props if you have any yeah no official plays I've been looking at rushing props for this game because you didn't mention Matt I do think Kansas City has gotten a little pass happy especially over the last couple of weeks, and I'd be interested to see if they return to the run in this game, though I'm just not really sure this is the matchup to do it. So you have Clyde edwards alary sitting at over under 34 and a half right now. I I want to go with the over in this one, but I could also just see the Chiefs really airing it out in this game, trying to exploit the secondary. So I I'm going to stay away for now, but I am interested in those. Check up. Yeah, I just wanted to add to um, the Niners defense has been great this year. They rank first in drop back EPA. But if you look at the schedule of offenses that they've played, it's the third easiest by DVOA. So they haven't really faced anybody like Patrick Mahomes this season. And with those secondary injuries, like we talked about, I think their offense will have success. Um, if that plays out, I think the Niners could be forced to throw, especially in the second half of the game. So I like George Kittle over four and a half receptions. Um, the Chiefs use that too high coverage on 65% of opponent dropbacks, the second highest rate in the league per true media. And when facing those types of schemes, Kittle, rate, Kittle leads the team with a 32% target share this year since returning in week three. Um, so I think he's going to be utilized. I think also the Chiefs pass rush uh, primarily comes from the interior with Chris Jones. So we, we've seen Kittle be used in line as a blocker quite often. But without real elite edge rushers on the on the perimeter to deal with, I think um, Shanahan might be more comfortable letting Kittle be a, pa a receiver in this game, especially if they're trailing and needing to come back. So I think even money on that prop, you're getting good value. Jason, yeah, that was a good, that was a good find by Jacob because I have been kind of just sneakily looking at tight ends against the Chiefs because of that, and that's kind of we've talked about that before with like the Hayden Hurst, you know, going up against Baltimore. Um, that's kind of just the way to find cheap targets and just cheap receptions. I mean, Tyler Higby has been doing it all season long, and Dalton Schultz was doing it early on when he was healthy. Um, so you can find good value in that regards. Like that's why I like Dustin Knox last week, but we couldn't talk about him just because of the the. Um, he was now just because of the injury report, but uh, I don't really have a ton. I mean, I'll, I'll didn't really get this far into player props, but I definitely like the Kittle one. All right, I'll throw you on that one. So official bets for this game, 
we have the 49ers plus three at a half unit for Patrick. Chiefs minus two and a half, full unit for Jacob and Jason, half unit for myself. We got George Kittle over four and a half receptions at plus 100, half unit for Jacob Jason. I have a half unit on Hardman, longest reception over 50 and a half at minus 110. Debo Samuel over 22 and a half, longest reception minus 105, half unit. And then Jacob and myself both have Mahomie over two and a half passing touchdowns at plus 155. It's going to wrap it up for this 49ers Chiefs game. We'll move on to the next one.